Today we're back working on the Atlas lathe. The saddle's been powder coated and I've got it back in place. I'm going to have to adjust shim packs. Everything I do probably today and for the foreseeable future on these is I'm just cleaning stuff up, starting to refit things and powder coat it. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go ahead, clean up this cross slide and we'll powder coat it and the stops that go with it, um, get it to match this gray. And we're going to install the, the uh, screw for it, screw in the nut. I'm not going to use these. This, I think, is probably going to end up with a production lever on it. Um, don't have all the parts for production level lever, so we'll change that later on. This, this has got some wear in it and everything. It would be acceptable that we're going to change it since we're rebuilding. So we're just going to install that today, get it in there, see how things work. Uh, same way with the front tool post. We'll clean it up, powder coat it gray. We'll probably do the handle in black because we've got blued on blued accessories here for the for the levers and our nuts and things like this that we went ahead and blued when we did it. So I'll probably powder coat that black. This is one of the two tool posts that I've got. I've got one that's new old stock. It's still got the wood shims underneath, so we don't, you know, it's never been mounted on a lathe. And it's all original. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Um it's got a square nut on on top of the all of the holders which was original this has been changed advantages and disadvantages to both ways we'll probably go back to the 5 16th I believe it's 5 16th these maybe 3 8 um, screws that go back in here I'll have to turn some or order some so we'll do that as time goes on and we disassemble some of this stuff why we'll reblue some of these parts when we're bluing next time like the the hold down nuts the the T nuts and the the bolts and everything that go in that hold it in place so we'll redo those um, get this in place um, I don't believe I've got a rear tool post we're gonna have to come up with a rear tool post for it and then we're gonna start working on the apron for the front the main hand wheel I'll go back and I think I'm gonna bush it it's a little bit sloppy in it so I don't have a balanced ball handle for this I was just going through all my parts and I do not have a handle for this so I started the CNC programming for those so I'll uh, I'll probably have to, well, I'm going to turn out some ball handles anyway, so it may go on here for now once I get that done. But for now, we're just going to start putting it together. I'll video a little bit of it for you, but basically it's all standard stuff that we've done before. Well, here's the most of our pieces right here now. Here's our little cross slide. Got to clean a little bit of the extra powder off, but we've got it cleaned up in gray, our lighter gray. These are our stops, and they're ready to have the adjustments put in there and assembled. And here is our front tool post. Had to clean the powder off the edge of this and the bottom hole here. And we were missing the spring and detent ball. And now we need a spring to go under there. And I don't think I've got any standard small springs, but I'll bet we can take a piece of spring stock here. It's a little smaller than what it should be. try again. Oh, 
that might be about what we want. Well, I don't have a 5 16 detent ball, so I'll have to pick one of those up. So for right now, we're just going to go ahead and set this together. And that will be our tool post. It will index into position. These are the hold down nuts for it. I've got to clean them up. And next time I blue, I'll probably blue them up in the washer. So now I think we can go back, go ahead and install our cross slide. And these are the adjustment screws that go on the stops. Those are going to be a standard quarter 28, it looks like. I think we'll go ahead and clean the powder out of those. Okay, so there's our stop set up. Let's go ahead and go back over the lathe. We'll set the cross slide on, the, um, set the stops in place. This is the gib. We've got to clean it up yet for the cross slide onto the saddle. And we've got to clean up the nuts and T-bolts to hold down the, the front tool post. All right, these parts have been powder coated up. Let's see if we can't get everything set in place the way it goes. Like that, I do believe. I'll go on there. Get just a little bit of stuff. I don't want to lube them up too much yet until we actually do final assembly on all of this because things are going to be come apart and be changed again as time goes on. take this nut and go ahead and run it off and get it in position on this cross slide. Oh, and this may create a problem here. This may not be. Well, and that gib is too wide for this. Uh, for this uh, cross slide. Or for this saddle. Another one of these production cross slides. Let's see what it looks like. Well, it appears I'm going to have to make a new gib for this or shave this one down, which I could do um, because it is too thick for this for this saddle by about half as much. Interesting. So that's a no-go. Anyway, let's go ahead and slide it on here. I'm not sure what the difference is. We'll, uh, we'll have to build some new parts for this, though. So. 
But for now, let's go ahead and pull it on here, see what it looks like, and then we can move on until I decide if I'm going to cut down this gib or if we're just going to build a new one. I'm not sure which is going to be the easiest to do, and I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot today. stops fit on here like this. A little bit of powder built up in the in the channels there. We'll have to clean it out. We'll sit in there like that. Here's our front tool post set up. like that. Let's go ahead and get the top portion out of the way. And these fasteners will either clean them up and re-blue them or else we'll just replace them. And I realize that's not a tremendous amount of progress, but we have gotten a little bit done here. We get a detent ball for that. We've got to put screws in here. We have to turn our adjusters for that, clean things up. Anyway, there's a little bit more progress going forward. Got new bolts to go down through the apron to hold it on. So next thing is go back and fit up a gib. There we go. A little more progress. Hopefully that uh, shows a little bit more. One thing I will caution is when we look at this stuff on the internet and I'm speaking to one of the main user groups for Atlas Machines is that you have to be very careful as you choose which information to listen to and what to ignore. Because here recently I'm seeing a lot of information being presented by the voices that are the loudest on that group and that information is incorrect. Um, I'm seeing some stuff being said about the Atlas Shapers, about the differences between the Model 7, 7A and the 7B, and the information that's online that's being discussed online um, is incorrect information. The, the discussion that was going on stated that uh, the powers that supposedly know all this were telling that the Model 7 came without guards, the 7A came with guards, and the 7B came with uh, the guard and the extra foot underneath. That information is incorrect. The 7 came complete with guards. The only reason there was a 7A designation given was that indicated the option of not having guards. So a 7A did not have the guards on it. Saved five pounds on the on the, the weight of the machine and saved you I think five or ten dollars was the, the difference in the price sheet on them. That information came off of a specification sheet that I did have in a, I believe it was catalog number 28, their general catalog on the shaper itself. I did try to post that to the group and that post was censored because it did not agree with uh, 
the loudest voice on that group so that that my post was just deleted off there so I wanted to clear that up here uh, when you start listening to some of this information make your own decisions as to what is right and what is wrong because some of the times you're being told misinformation and that's this is not a isolated instance this has happened before so anyway just something to be aware of uh, I hope you found this a little bit helpful for you a little bit entertaining if nothing else um, as I move forward with my Atlas projects, you're going to see me break this into to different websites. I've been putting this build on my hillsgun.com website. I also own atlasmachineshop.com, which is not currently running. I do not have that um, up for public viewing right now. I will probably separate those two websites and the atlasmachineshop.com when it's back up and running will have all the atlas information i may put some other machine tool information on there too but that will primarily be uh, my atlas rebuilds and the, the reproduction parts that i offer for that so if that interests you keep your eyes open for that i'll let you know when that uh, when that website's up and running again i have in the past had the rebuild on my little atlas mf milling machine when I rebuilt that machine why that was on hillsgun.com website it's not currently up there I may reload part of that information I may wait and load that on the atlasmachineshop.com I'll keep that updated on the video so we've got an idea of where I'm peddling my wares here so anyway thanks for taking the time to watch guys